Ricky Minor is a double Emmy nominee this year for his music direction for the Oscars and the Kennedy Center Honors. I'm Kevin Jacobson of Gold Derby here with Ricky. Um, and like I said, you're double nominated, but this isn't even the first or the second time you've been nominated two times in uh, Best <laughs> Music Direction. So first question, does it ever get old getting nominated twice in the same category? Uh, may it never get old. <laughs> I'll tell you, I mean, uh, it's really uh, it's just an embarrassment of riches. I mean, to get nominated one time in any category anywhere is big. So it, it doesn't fall short on me how the quality of work that's being put out there and to be recognized for two different shows is nerve wracking for sure, you know. But uh, you know, I'm 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 so excited, and I I was kidding, you know, last year when I said, uh, you know, this should go every year. Every year I should get two. I think this is a new thing, uh, but it's too nerve wracking. Uh, I'm 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 happy for for anyone to be nominated and be nominated. I'm grateful. Well, let's start with the Oscars. Uh, this was your second year in a row as the music director. Can you tell us about uh, whether you learned anything from that first time that you may be adjusted for this ceremony? Well, I think, you know, you have to really look at, take each, even though it's the same show, if you don't go in looking for new ways to improve and new things that, to learn from, because, you know, if you can't repeat the exact same thing, because then you're not growing, the show's not benefiting from that uh, idea. So I think that, you know, the first time you do anything, you're really like on more on edge because you want to be able to add something. And a lot of times we think it's something really big that we have to do to make a difference. But it's all the small things. And that's what I feel is important. The inner workings of, of really selecting the proper play ons and really dealing with the artists and just trying to find ways to connect better. That's the key for me. And I think that, you know, this year uh, we had, uh, we, we did all of the performances or were involved in all the performances except for the Elton number, which we did some work with them. And I did work with them some, but, but the others, we, we did the complete thing, including the, the surprise uh, Eminem performance we were involved in. And uh, so it's, it's uh, I, I, I think that, that, that I learned a lot from the first year and, and I learned a lot this year. So if I get a chance to do it again, I'll, I'll come with even more information, you know. And uh, opening up the show, you had Janelle Monae um, and Billy Porter performing uh, Won't You Be My Neighbor and Come Alive and I'm Still Standing. Um, what were kind of the initial discussions about kind of opening the Oscars in that way? Well, I think that, you know, the creative is really like it's a back and forth always, you know, and uh, the producers come up with an idea. Uh, they always reach out to, to the artist to talk about it. And it goes back and forth and back and forth. And, and how, you know, because the, the producers have, have one goal and that's to make it the best show they can. The artists, you know, this is a big platform and this is a big m moment for them. So, but I think that the collaborative spirit of it and you know, there's uh, what which artist is right for it. What song should go in? Could we add an Elton song in there? Could we add another song in there? You know, what songs could we add? What artists could we do? And it just kept morphing. And I mean, it always does that. And it, it all, and then you think like, you know, like every show I go to, I think like, boy, we're not gonna make it. We're not, gonna, you know, this show's not gonna come on on the air on time and not, you know, and on budget and all of the things that it has to hit. And then magically, they all do, you know. And so this is one of, one of the numbers where we really had to work hard to find, to make it the best that it could be and not leave no, uh, no stone unturned from wardrobe, from characters, from everything about it had to be right. And, and I, you know, I come in, Janelle and her team were just on it. I mean, daily, daily with emails, conversations, live meetings, you know, and, and not all artists get involved like that, you know. So hats off to them. And they have a, 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 a Emmy nomination for Jamel, uh, who did the choreography. And, and again, uh, we worked really hard to make sure every beat, every hit, everything that needed to be accent was the way it needed to be 
for her to have the performance she had, which I think is a performance of a lifetime. Absolutely. Yeah. Very unexpected and very, very fun, energetic way to open oh. things up. Um, and I'm, I, and you very, mentioned it. Very inclusive, you know, very inclusive. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, you mentioned it earlier. I'm curious about the Eminem performance, uh, which was kept a secret. No one knew that that would be happening. It oh. begins with this. I, I think it began with this montage of like music in the movies. And then yeah. at the end, we hear that orchestral version, you know, coming up. And then here comes Lose Yourself. Here comes Eminem out on the stage performing live. How did that all come together? Well, you know, I think that, again, the producers are looking for, for ways to, to celebrate. And if we, you look at the show, it's celebrated film and music and film. And so I think that there were segments built around celebrating the, 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 the film industry and, and the Oscars. And I think that the fact that he, hadn't, he didn't perform when he won, this is a great opportunity, again, to talk about music and the impact of, of, of music in film. And, and uh, I think we, we had these iconic moments and you know the editors worked, the producers really laid it out and we just kept going back and forth, all departments that needed to know, only departments that needed to know. I mean, the, the entire show didn't know. You know, I mean, people, no one knew. I mean, the band was actually uh, 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 not happy that they didn't know because they, went to the bathroom during the break. So they didn't even see it at all. <laughs> you know, they were like, okay, this is gonna be a clip thing. Great, great. We can just go to, every, you know, this is our cue to go to the bathroom the only time in a three hour show, a three hour plus show. So they came and like, what happened? What just happened? <laughs> you know, but uh, you know, we, we really, I think there were probably a handful of people who knew, you know, uh, and I think that that's, and that's the really only way to, you know, I mean, no, it was like a, you know, you just had to, had to sign, sign in blood, you know, I, I will not tell. <laughs> but uh, it, was, it was a great surprise and people enjoyed it. Yeah. And I, I'm also just curious always about the music choices for montages, because we see quite a few montages at the Oscars typically. Um, and the Oscars did something kind of new this year, which was doing a montage of the acting nominees. You know, instead of going individually to clips from each film, you know, it was just a montage and it helped with the music to sort of weave all of the five nominated performances together in a way that I think was pretty, pretty seamless. Uh, what's, what's that process of always, you know, finding the right music cues for those montages? Well, well that's the thing. The editor, uh, you know, sends the, uh, a lot of times sends those that, that type of thing to me. And I kind of went through with them, but they were spot on. And, and it was really the producer's choice in terms of the final choice of what the music should be. But it was always meant to excite, uh, create tension, uh, create, create these great uh, intimate moments and to kind of seamlessly go back and forth. And I, I loved it. I mean, there were a lot of new things tried this year. And I think it's important that we look for ways to to present things in different ways or, or, or revisit a way and explore it and go deeper into it, you know? And I, uh, you know, the editor was like just so spot on and looking for the right pieces in those films. And it was very entertaining and it made it move faster. You know, if you watch the clip from one thing, then you watch the clip, by the time you get to the, if, especially if you have eight nominations, by the time you get to the last one, you're like, what was the first one, <laughs> you know? So it, it was done really nicely, and I, I'm, I'm, uh, I think it was really great. I hope that, uh, that, that the future, whoever does, uh, does the show, looks at, at, at some of these fun ways that, that uh, this producing team did. Yeah, I, I really liked that. Yeah, um, and moving over to the Kennedy Center Honors, uh, this year they honored Earth, Wind and & Fire and Linda Rodstad and the uh, conductor, Michael Tilson Thomas, as far as musicians. Uh, what kind of background did you have with, with those artists before you started uh, working on their, on their tributes? Well, um, uh, sorry about that. I, mean, I, I think it's time for me to take a nap. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I don't know you, but, um, I, I, so the initial conversations are never, of course, with the artists. They don't know 
who's, who's honoring them. But uh, the producers look, take a look at uh, what, they're, what they're doing in, and with the uh, talent booker and, uh, and talent producers, we take a look and see who would be great, who's available in that whole thing of it. But when it came time to picking songs, uh, it was, you know, the, the artist and I just trying to comb through the material and see what would make. So my first go, uh, job is to make sure that I find the right song for them, for each artist that, that would help that make them shine and that they would enjoy and that they connect to. So we talk about their, their uh, uh, love for the, for the, for the artist who's being tributed. And they go, hey, this, I sung this song in my show every night. I know this upside down. It would mean a lot to me. So you look at that and then try to pace it, you know, of which artist goes first. How do you build uh, a, a tribute performance and how do you end it, you know? So uh, it was exciting, really exciting for all of them. I mean, uh, uh, Linda was really exciting as well. And, you know, and we still have all of these cues to play, even with Sally Phil uh, being honored as well. We have uh, to make sure that we, the, in, in terms of the play-ons and, and that we add certain music based on her career. And what do you play Spielberg on with? And, you know, what do you play uh, Tom Hanks on with? So you have to really look at the pacing of the show, energy-wise, where are we, should it be? Uh, solemn should it be celebratory? I mean, what is the music for each moment? And so there's a lot of uh, prep work. We probably start uh, around shows in December. We start somewhere around uh, October in in the discussions, mid October, and start laying out the show. So it de definitely takes time. And then sometimes things happen. The artist has to cancel, and you have to kind of be flexible on it. But uh, yeah, they, they were all fun to do. Uh, the, the Linda Ronstadt thing was great for, for me, uh, you know, because uh, when I talked to Carrie Underwood, who were, of course, have a long relationship since the idol days, and, uh, and uh, she was really, she had picked some songs, I picked some, and we were really close. And, uh, and then to be able to put together a version for her that would be her own uh, uh, with Blue Bayou was really, fun and when will I be loved you know she just she just had a great time well yeah I mean you've become kind of an expert at these music specials that are honoring artists um and you've you've gotten all kinds of nominations for them um do you have do you have something of a formula by now or just like a key ingredient that you always want to lead with when it comes to sort of directing the perfect kind of tribute for these artists? Yeah, I, you know, I mean, I think the biggest thing uh, uh, is to learn to, to listen more, you know, and talk less. So I try to listen to the artists and see what they feel, because if I'm not supporting that, then I'm trying to make them do something I think they should do. So I never try to tell them what to sing or how to sing, but I try to get them to, to go inward and, and sing their truth and therefore it's honest and people connect to that, whether, whether they like it or not, that's, that's not for me to decide, but that they connect to it in some way. And I feel that, that helping them get back to the center is going to be a win-win for everyone. So like with, um, I don't go, I don't over explain something. They're here because, you know, they're on these stages because they have great talent and the world knows it. So, I'm not trying to change them or fix them. They're not broken. It's just helping them get, because a lot of times we get, all of us, we get in our head about something. We overthink something like, what if I do this? Or how do I do it? You know, like in my case, I go like, what about my hair? Like, how do I wear my hair for this interview? And then I was like, okay, I'll just go with this. You know, what I have now, you know? And so I think that they, they overthink too. It's easy to overthink something. But if you just say, hey, don't, you know, the last thing I tell them is don't forget to breathe. Because a lot of times we get, and we kind of get tight, you know, and we don't, we don't let it flow. So I think that the success is based on uh, empowering the performers and giving it back to them and letting them know that, hey, you know, if, if I feel a sense of, of, of anxiety, then I try to find out what that is. Could it be the key of the song? Could it be a particular note that they're kind of 
I don't know if I can hit this note like the original artist and and I explain that there's there's no one like you sing it the way you sing it you know and and feel it the way you feel it and your truth is always the right thing yeah um well like I said you have been nominated 11 times now by the Emmys you won in 2017 um and I'm curious looking back at all of those specials that you've been nominated for I've got the I've got the list pulled up right here um you uh you have genius a night for ray charles um the grammys of 2008 the grammys of 2009 um an evening of stars tribute to shaka khan uh smithsonian salutes ray charles staying alive a grammy salute to the Bee Gees. taking the stage african-american music and stories that changed america which is the one you won for um, the Oscars last year, and Aretha, a Grammy celebration for the Queen of Soul, and now your two nominations this year. That's a lot. Um, is there one in particular, though, that will just always stick with you as something that is special that you'll just never forget? Well, I mean, I think that we all can speak to this in life. It's your first. It's always your first one yeah. because it's so... It's so unbelievable, it's so magical, and it's Ray Charles. I mean, it was so nice that 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 I had to to uh, I, I produced the show as well at the White House uh, for for President Obama, and uh, you know, and it was special. I mean, it, there was a uh, a special moment. I I met Ray years before that and conducted for him, and uh, and I've I've done you know TV shows with him on it, and the 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 great thing I love about him is. Uh, uh, he always knew when you walked in the room. There was something, a, a way that he knew, like, I, I, it would always perplex me. You know, I'd walk in and go, hey, baby, how you doing there, Ricky? You know, so, I mean, for him to know who's walking in the room, I don't know how he does that. I mean, Stevie Wonder told me that for a guy, they were friends, and, uh, and, and Ray Charles, and I, you know, and I was doing the Kennedy Center honor to salute Stevie. And Ray was on the show. And uh, so I thought, wow, what a great moment. Like, I really would love to, to take a picture, you know, with the two of them and, and, and me. And back then, it was no cell phones. So one of the guys in the band had a, 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 a you know, Polaroid, a little, 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 uh, little throwaway camera and stuff. So, that, so I, 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 I built up the courage. In, in the green room, I said, uh, uh, Hey Ray, is it okay if I get a picture with you and, and Stevie? And he said, uh, uh, "I don't know. Uh, ask Stevie." So I said, "Stevie, uh, can I can I get a picture with you and Ray?" He says, "I think you gotta ask Ray." Ray Ray said, "Man, just go and take the picture. He blind. He won't know." <laughs> You know, <laughs> and so those guys kidded each other about being yeah. blind. We took the picture, and I never got it. My friend oh. he lost the thing, but uh, but that's a memory of Ray. You know, I mean, he always talked in the, in the in the third person. I mean, we were at rehearsal for another show, and and he came early, and and the crew was on on a break and everything. He sat on the piano. He says, "Okay, I'm I'm here. I'm ready to go. Let's go." Now, 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 listen, Ray don't play. Ray will leave. Start talking to Ray will leave. We got to go right now. I got things to do. You know, so he when he was ready to go, he was ready to go, and uh, so I so that memory of him. Uh, on these shows and being able to do that tribute to him uh, after he had passed was really great. And uh, so I, I honor that uh, someone like him and his life story, which not only inspired me, but inspired millions. Yeah, that's a great note to end on. Thank you yeah. so much, Ricky, for talking to us today. Absolutely love your stories. Um, congrats again on your two nominations this year. Best of luck for the uh, the virtual ceremony to come. Yeah, yeah, that's that would be different. I mean, but you know, I can still shout uh, at home. I, and it, shouting doesn't uh, doesn't uh, have to happen at the show. I'll be shouting right. at home, and I'll be celebrating whoever wins. Yeah, and, and, um, and, and, and for and those of you, oh, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> just gonna say for those of you watching, hit like and subscribe for more interviews just like this, and head to goldderby.com to make your winner predictions. Thanks again, Ricky. Thanks, man.